fine? Yes. If a catastrophe were imminent, it would naturally be preceded by a sign. It can't be. Convey these orders to all troops. Pull the front line back to the Bionis arm. All units, withdraw from the front at once! Sir, are you sure? Victory is in our hands, Your Highness. We must strike the final blow. Do you not realize where we are? Sir? Listen to me. We are on the sword of the Mekonis. <laughs> Calm down! Calm down! <laughs> it's moving! Oh. Are we too late? Melia, be safe. All units retreat immediately! The Mekonis is about to awaken! Damn it! I was counting on you, runt. What's happening? It's like we're floating in mid-air. Fiora, are you doing this? Lady Manus, you have awakened once more. This light, was it you who saved us when we fell from the fortress? Manus, where's Fiora? It's okay, I'm here too. After all that occurred at the fortress, my soul was exhausted. But I was revived by the cry of a young Holmes. By his wish to protect you all. Gado. If he had not acted as a shield, I would have been unable to save you. I am sorry. Gado. Saved us. Now he's... The Mechonis! Where's Hegel? Shulk! Do you hear it? The awakening of the Mechonis! This is my pain. The pain of my people, echoing through the millennia! Fall to your deaths, worthless insects! Stop this! Kalyan and the others are still on the sword! Our friends are going to die! Stop! <laughs> That murdering monster is gonna pay! Uh, uh, but Tharon! Fiora? <sighs> Sorry. I can't do it. Fiora! <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> that was a close one, but we made it. <laughs> Alvis, you are aboard Junks, the Machina ship. It was he who informed us that you were in danger. I'm glad we found you in time. Thank you. <laughs> hey! <laughs> what a stroke of luck. You're still alive. Dixon! So you were unable to stop Egil. <sighs> Sorry, Father. I have failed you, Vanea. There's no need to apologize. 
So, what do we do now? At this rate, that blasted Egil is gonna destroy Bionis. Alvis, what happened to the Allied force? I informed His Highness of the possibility that the Maconis would awaken. His Highness is wise. He will have acted to minimize casualties. That's good. Brother, there is still time. Fiora? No, you're... So it is her. The Mekonis and I exist as one. Egil is using ether energy absorbed from the Bionis to force it to move. There is still time before the Mekonis fully adapts to the ether. Egil is at the core of the Mekonis. He will be controlling the Mekonis from there. Only by destroying the core will you be able to stop the Mekonis. But how are we to get there? The Mekonis capital is destroyed. Father, how much remaining energy does Junks have? Don't worry. I made sure to fill her up. <laughs> On the back of the Mekonis is a huge cooling duct. We should be small enough to enter the control core section via the duct's heat transfer conduits. Junks can take us as far as the duct. You have our gratitude. We must go there at once. Then let's get a move on. This one's for Gado. Here, here. Too right. Gado's wishes live on through me. We will fight to the end. When you are ready to depart for the Mekonis, let my father know. I will prepare the vessel. Understood. Oi! Look at that! What the... There is little time left. We must stop Egil this time. It is in your hand, Shulk. I know. Hello everyone and welcome back to Xenoblade Chronicles. A hell of a lot of has happened. Part of which is, the Maconis is just moving now. Um, I wasn't kidding when I said Sword Valley and Galahad Fortress are never accessible in the game again because, well, they're over there now. Uh, <laughs> so... Yeah, once half of the continent start walking around, um, things become a bit problematic. Um, now that the um, the Maconis is moving, we can actually see this from a couple of points. Probably the, there's two really clear points where you see this, um, which we'll, we'll have a look at. Also, Junks. Junks is a ship. It makes sense when you see it there. I never put it together until this moment in the game, where I was like, oh, it's a, it's a fucking ship. Apparently, canonically, Junks is also how you get between the Fallen Arm and other places. When you first land on the Fallen Arm after Galahad Fortress, you skip travel back up here or something. How do you do that? you notice, by the way, yeah, the Bionis right arm holding nothing, because it's gripped where the sword would be, but the sword has been withdrawn, and you can see, again, you can see the uh, Maconis kind of moving around in the distance. I think the place where you can see it most clearly from, because there's a lot of clouds down here that were added in the definitive edition, they actually weren't there beforehand, but in this version I think the best place to see it from is the prison terrace. But yeah, it's always kind of implied that then, then if you fast travel from the fallen arm back up onto the Bionis, what the party were actually doing was having, was, was being flown up there by junks. Um, because none of the party react in anything like surprise to, oh my god, Junks is a ship. Uh, like, Junks can fly. It's, it's a fucking, well, not quite spaceship, but like it's an airship uh, fighter kind of thing. They're just like, oh yes, we're on board Junks, the Machina ship. Of course we are. Um, so I guess, I don't know if something was left out at some point, uh, which kind of made that a bit clearer, but 
fast travel is always a bit of an odd one in this game. It's never clear whether you are supposed to be just legitimately walking that distance. Anyway, it's fucking cool to see the Mechonis moving around. You can see the difference in its arms here. Now, how the left arm has kind of got those wheelie spirals around it, whereas the right arm has got the curvy shoulder blade. And the left arm would have originally looked like the right arm uh, before, obviously, we saw that beast. We've seen it twice. We saw it very much in the opening cutscene and then also in Mayneth's rendering of it in... Uh, Agniratha, we saw that arm being cut off, and what you see there is Egil's rebuilt form. Because uh, you can't fight the <laughs> Maconis, the, the Bionis again if you've only got one arm. With that, we are going to just head straight on. Uh, n weirdly, despite the fact that Maconis is moving around, not much has actually changed on the Bionis, and there's not many more side stuff open, we just need to get on with this. When we head here, we are, once we speak to Mikkel and say we want to head there, we are locking in the end of Act. Two of Xenoblade Chronicles. Uh, I'm going to make it daytime for some upcoming scenes, uh, which look better in the day. Um, but yeah, we're reaching the end of Act 2. As such, a huge amount of stuff is about to change, and a lot of stuff will become unavailable. The following missions will be, uh, which are all timed quests, will expire at the point of speaking to Mikol here. In Agniratha, uh, all those, um, like, uh, all the generic quests we did will expire. Civil Protection 1 and 2, Military Protection 1 and 2, all the parts of those, Agniratha Beautification 1 and 2, Telethra Investigation 1 and 2. In the Central Factory, uh, Eliminate the Backup, Daring Assault and Ruth Battle will go. In Alchemoth, uh, a lot of quests in Alchemoth go. A Friend in Need, A Necessary Upgrade, Adventurers in Peril, Back Pain, Believing Again, Brave Actions, Bring Back My Son, Building Bridges, Challenge Quests 1 to 4, Collection Quests 1 to 4, Monster Quests 1 to 4, Parts 1 to 3, Search quest 1 to 4, going out to play, getting a member's card, how do I feel, how do they feel, looking for a lost daughter, looking for a lost fun, lost fun, looking for a lost son, looking for gold bugs, see it feels like that's grouped with the other ones but it's not, losing the taste for alcohol, preparing for adventure, preparing for adventure 2, preparing for adventure 3, Starlight Seeker, Starlight Gazer, Talia's Research, Teaching Materials, Deciphering Machine, Protect the Capital, Brave Actions, Together Forever, uh, Together Forever, Together Forever, good one, and I Love You No Matter What. On the fallen, fallen Arm, a weapon just for me. In Frontier Village, Advisor Hunt, Dangerous Ambition, Destroying the City Trade, Evidence Collection and Find the Kingpin, and in Satoral Marsh, a gift and gather information. There's a logic to which quests become unavailable, which will make sense in about three or four episodes' time, and I'll talk about it then. If there are any of those quests you haven't done, now's your last chance. Uh, you can do them happily while the Mechonis is moving around. Oh my god! Fuck. I was like, what's the Mechonis up to up there? And it was just to eliminate, like, suddenly the figure of the moving Mechonis was illuminated by a single stroke of lightning, and that was horrifying. And on that horrifying note, let's go and deal with this. You all set to go? I still can't get over the fact that this is Daddy Pig from Peppa Pig. He was also an episode of Merlin. The sprite was been caning through Merlin recently, you know, the shitty BBC young Merlin wizard thing, but he was in it. And she was like, I recognise that voice. I was like, oh, it's Mikkel from Xenoblade. And she's like, what? I was like, also Peppa Pig. But he's just got a really recognisable voice. We're heading to Maconis Core. You better be ready. You ready to head off? Go to the Maconis Core. If you look at, like, all the quests I listed, if you look at anything on, uh, like, the Xenoblade wiki, there's a load of stuff which says not available until after Maconis Core or expires at Maconis Core. Maconis, like Prison Island at the end of Act 1, Maconis Core is the end of Act 2, and it is a huge dividing point. It's basically when you get into the end game. So a lot of stuff changes here. Let's go to the Maconis Core. Do my eyes deceive me? The Mechonis is moving. Oi, you! I'm warning you, you better not drop me. Let me go and you'll be doing sit-ups for the rest of your life. Yes, Colonel!
Athenea. I am sorry. For Lady Manus' will to be realized, I had no choice but to use your body. Even so... Actually, I'm grateful. Thanks to this body, I got to see Shulk and the others again. <laughs> Where is Lady Maynoth now? Shall I call her? She is usually asleep. Maybe she just doesn't want to disturb me. It's an unusual feeling. Two hearts in one body. It's not every day you get to experience something like this. I... see. That is a great relief. It's as if I can see into our heart. We each know what the other's thinking, but it's strange. It feels like there's a part of my heart that's hidden. It's the part that holds Manus' feelings, and I can't see them. Maybe it's only natural. Everyone has one or two secrets, right? But I know how much she cares about this world. That's why I'm happy to let her use my body. Fiora, I think Lady Maynoth is glad that she met you. Yeah, I know. from His Highness. The Allied force retreated in time. Casualties were kept to a minimum. Glad to hear it. That's great news. All areas are being prepared for evacuation. We can only hope they make it. We won't let them down. This is one fight we can't afford to lose. Here upon Ricky, all set. Ricky found some heads. We'll go with you. Can't beat strength in numbers. Really? You're a tough old timer. What's this? The old fossil wants to tag along. As long as you don't slow us down. Uh, let's see who makes it through that battle. We're here. Everyone ready? Ready. Anytime. Leave it to Hiropon Ricky. <sighs> hey, Shulk. What is it this time? Stop worrying and come on. The Monado isn't at full strength. I don't know if it can beat Egil. You're talking about that apocryph, whatchamacallit thing. Don't worry. He's no match for all of us together. At least the previous encounter allowed us to gauge how he fights. We won't make the same mistakes again. The core is directly linked to the Apocrypha generator. Destroy the generator, and the Apocrypha field will deactivate, allowing Shulk's Monado to function properly again. Now you tell us. I wish you'd said something earlier. Oh, Shulk, did you hear that? <laughs> Looks like you'll get your wish. Something's not right. What? Egil. He called me Zanza. The same Zanza who devastated Mechonis. What did he mean? He was just trying to get to you. I told you before, right? I haven't had any visions lately. Yeah? But I still know 
if I concentrate, I feel like something will happen, and it does. Are you saying you don't need a vision to know what comes next? Pull the other one. Ryan, you're going to scratch your head with your right hand. <gasps> what are you on about, Shulk? Stop playing around. Oh. But... How did you do that? I can't work it out. Ever since we came to Mekonis, my abilities have been changing. Why would that happen? <gasps> if it's true that Zanza used the Monado to lay waste to Mekonis, then... Is it right for me to use it? Is what I'm trying to do really the right thing? Shulk! control of the Monado has always been flawless. It never crossed my mind that this would happen to you too. Are you sure you're okay? Perhaps you are suffering this much because you put all your energy into fighting the effect of the Apocrypha. Ain't you learnt yet, Shulk? How many times do I have to tell you? If something's up, you've got to spit it out, man. I ain't just talking about visions. I mean, whatever's on your mind. All right? Mm. S sorry, Ryan. Don't go apologizing. It's my fault for not noticing. Let's get one thing straight. I've still got your back. Uh, thanks. No. Huh? Prepare to die. Shulk. No. Zanza. This wasn't caused by the Apocrypha. It's a completely different kind of power. Shulk. What's happening to me? I know I should be glad we made it this far, but if we don't find the Apocrypha generator soon... Exactly. The fight against Egil's not going to be easy with the Monado in its current state. And we don't know what kind of toll it'll take on Shulk's body. We have to destroy that generator. It's up ahead. Shulk? There's a strong energy coming from up ahead. That has to be it. Really? Yes. Then this is it. Egil's gonna be scrap metal when I'm through with him. A lot of stuff has happened there as well. Note where this landmark is, the ventilation conduit. Listen to the music and look below us. I'm going to talk a bit more about that in a second, but for now let's get the most bizarre side quest in the game in a lot of ways. If you walk back to junk, most people don't know this even exists, genuinely. Um, because it's not obvious on your minimap from where you stand. There is Junk's staff. If we talk to her... Yes. You seem really talkative. I heard from Venea there's a weapon production machine here. Do you know what came to mind when I heard that? Please, tell me more. Yes, please do. I too would like to hear. Stop pretending you don't know what I'm getting at. You can make a weapon, an extraordinarily strong one. The materials are all ready. Just take them to the machine and you can make a new weapon for Fiora. A new weapon will come in handy. Are you interested? You're so considerate. Thank you for keeping me in mind. It's okay. No need to thank me. It's the least I can do. New weapon for Q Fiora. Use the weapon creation machine in the control tower of the central factory. I know you'll like the new weapon. Be careful how you go. So let's track that and we'll see. Because as you can probably tell, we're, we're in the central factory. Um... 
if I bring up the minimap, we'll think, oh yes, you remember the weapons creation panel, um, where we built that bomb to uh, break into the actual like uh, mech on foundry part of that. So we'll just uh, warp down there. No, we won't. Uh, landmarks unavailable. So this brings us onto the very odd thing that is this exact point. But I'll talk about that in just a sec. Um, a lot of really cool stuff happens there in terms of that kind of whole scene of, of flying in here. And we're getting some interesting stuff with Shulk now. Um, we're starting to get towards one of my big theories about this game. Never had a chance to actually discuss this theory with anyone. No idea the extent to which it's true. There are a remarkable number of similarities between the plot of Xenoblade Chronicles and the plot of Dune, uh, as in uh, Frank Herbert's Dune, and especially the film version of it. Shulk starts to see the future. Paul Atreides starts to see the future. When Shulk sees the future, his eyes go blue. Same with um, the like Paul and the Fremen in that. And both also conceptually deal with very similar ideas. Bridge to Apocrypha. Notice we are well above the central factory. And there is the Apocrypha generator. This whole thing was visible the entire time we were down in the central factory. It's just there. Um, that's where we need to go. But we can go this way. Do you remember I drew attention to you, to you to a part of the central factory that I said, it's closed, but we'll be there later. Here is that part. Majestic Mordred is just through there. We're still not going to fight him because we're nowhere near the level we need to be in order to fight the bastard. So he's just going to slip past our radar on this one. When I was mentioning the quests that become available when you deal with the Maconis, uh, the Mana Shrine even, uh, I didn't note the ones in the Central Factory or the ones in Agnotha. I've noted them now upon coming to Maconis Core, and when you conclude the events of, uh, that happen that we're, we're building towards, indeed you lose that. Those quests have not expired yet. If you've still got any of the surprise quests in uh, the Central Factory or any of the ones in Agnotha, kicking around your inventory, uh, like your quest log, I suppose, uh, they're still there, and they haven't expired yet, because you can still access them here. I'll get back to my Dune theories in a, in a little bit. Well, I suppose i got one more point on that, which is part of what they deal with is how being able to see the future affects a person, and essentially with the process of kind of what is a god, at what point do you reach that stage? Because um, certainly... Eggles talked a bit about um, uh, this world no longer has a need for gods. Uh, well, no, I did. I specifically said gods can never live alongside mortals, and we see kind of Maynath kind of kicking around um, and the issues that that Eggle has with that. Bear the comparison if you know if you're familiar with Dune. Bear that comparison in your mind more and more the more we kind of uh, go on, because I think I think the writers that this game drew from Dune, and specifically from David Lynch's uh, version of Dune. A fair bit, uh, but I've never been able to find anything in the actual content that that's uh, like in 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 the, in the files or anything like that. As a man who doesn't speak or read any Japanese, never been able to find anything that suggests that. But how they deal with you know fate, destiny, gods, uh, a lot of that is 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 I think connected. I've walked up to Ignirtha. We can't, still can't skip travel. We can't skip travel anywhere. Like we can't skip travel back to uh, the high end of your tomb or anything. Skip, skip travel is just disabled during this part of the game. I know they're still here, all still intact. Data center's fine. Main Earth Shrine is fine. If you want to get some collectibles here, lovely chance to do it now. Um, I actually genuinely need a central factory collectible, so I'm gonna have to have to Hoover that up now. But that brings me to an interesting point. This should be destroyed. The main statue we saw and the area around it was destroyed uh, by Egil and they talked about the capital being destroyed. You shouldn't be able to access it here. And indeed, if you get all the way down to the bottom and you try to access Maconis Field, it says you can't do that because it's been destroyed. Access to Agniratha there is seemingly an accident. They did a lot of gameplay and mechanical changes during the remastered version, but they didn't 
fix a lot of things. Not many, uh, some mechanical glitches again, but they didn't rename Majestic Mordred, Majestic Mordred, for example. Uh, and there are various things that people thought might have been glitches. We're not sure if they are or not, but they weren't fixed in this. And access to Agniratha during this period is one of those. It is theorized that the way into Apocrypha and the Apocrypha generator, the kind of bridge to Apocrypha, there it is up there, um, was different in earlier versions of the game. Um, we know they changed stuff, definitely, in terms of the order of things. And it is theorized that you were initially supposed to enter... So you you know you fall off Agniratha, Agniratha blows up, and you can't get to any of the Makonis areas anymore. So Makonis Field, Makonis uh, uh, Central Factory, and Agniratha are all, are all close to you. Makes sense. Then you fly in through the... On junks, and let's say you fly in via, you know, Maconis right arm, or Maconis shoulder, or the Maconis back, or something like that. Oh, a spade unit. Fuck it, let's fight this guy. Why not? While I'm talking. Um, so it's theorized that you weren't always supposed to come in this way, and then at some point they were like, oh, this isn't working, and so they repurposed it to be like, oh, well, we'll just put the route into Apocrypha being on top of the central factory. And then they're like, oh, we've got the weapon generation panel that already exists in the central factory. We'll redirect the new weapon for Fiora quest to here. But it's weird. As you'll notice, we're, we're part way down to it. It's a really long walk. You've got to go to that thing and there's no skip travel. You've just got to make that walk yourself without being able to skip travel. And you shouldn't be able to access Agniratha. Like, everything about the plot implies that that shouldn't... Uh, be an option. Oh god, this is still going. We are not finished indeed. Not a bad chain attack. Um, but yes, it's... it's. We don't have any evidence of, of any solid evidence of that. There are other beta areas in the game that were clearly supposed to connect to other areas which have, there are much clearer evidence of. Uh, the main one of those is Bionis Shoulder. Originally in the game, and I'll talk about this a lot more in length, especially because they made this a thing during the DLC. Um, Future Connected that I will be dealing with uh, on this. Oh god, that's not good. Oh, we're in the very exposed post-chain attack period. Actually, no, we're not. Um, we should be fine, because um, we've got Party Gauge. Oh, do we want to try and... Fuck it, let's try and finish him with a chain attack. Uh, right, so let's double wind. Let's joink, why not? And let's Soaring Tempest should kill him. Yeah, there we go. Um, so originally when you finished... You remember when you got to the end of Frontier Village? At the top there was just a teleporter that led you straight to Aerith Sea. Originally that wasn't the case. Originally you went round, because you're on the back of the bonus, so and then at that point you went round to the left shoulder. So you kind of spiralled around the back. Uh, went up to the left shoulder, and then from the left shoulder... You explored that, and that was a fairly big area, and then you went to Alchemoth. They weren't very happy with the pacing on that, uh, and the area wasn't finished, but it's left in the game. Uh, and Maconis... I've, I've taken the wrong fucking lift. Oh well, this will connect over. Uh, speeder on, please. Uh, Maconis... No, Bionis' left shoulder was left in the game relatively intact. Uh, it's not finished, but it's a huge area that you can explore, and indeed... They subsequently released a DLC for this game that came, comes with a uh, definitive edition called Future Connected, which is set very much in uh, on Maconis on Bionis' left shoulder. And it's possible that they planned something similar for you know you'd when you after leaving the Maconis, leaving being kicked off the Maconis at Agniratha, they'd you would re-enter the Maconis at a very different point, and then proceed to Agniratha for to Apocrypha, not Agniratha from there. Um, but at some point during development that was cut and moved to the central factory. Again, it is up there the whole time, you can you can see it. But it would make sense why you have this weird bit where there's access to Maconis, but it's not right. You can't skip travel and it wants you to do go to places when you're not allowed to skip travel and some bits are still intact. It's all... It's all just a bit spooky at this point. I meant to take that lift there, which lands you down there, which takes us exactly to this weapon creation station. Have I got this final fucking collectible I'm missing? There? No, I haven't used What is this? Well, I've just learned it spawns at night only. Because um, that's a thing with collectibles, which is fun, and then nothing ever tells you in the game. In fairness, they did do... Oh, dear. There we go. Fine. Um, they did do quite a lot to correct that by at least... Um, 
having the quest marker stuff be a lot more obvious for things where you actually need them for quests. Unfortunately, that doesn't work when you need something for the Collectopedia. Um, and also by having stuff accessible from the Land of Challenge, from the Not One Arch Sage. Faithful Lancelot. Oh, this guy's going to have a bad time because he is very small now. Um, I'm going to kill him. Uh, speed it on. I'm actually going to kill a lot of stuff in here because I want to get all the collectibles that are down here. There is a unique monster we've not fought here before, which I will fight on the speeder as well, which is we fight Faithful Lancelot and then we fight Temporal Gawain afterwards. And we really... We're going to cane our way through the Arthurian unique monsters of the Mechonis one final time. I was not aware until that fight that Temporal Gawain has quite a punishing topple spike. Ooh! Oh, anchor chain. God, right, I'm fucking continuing my tradition of getting master art books for shit arts. Because this is, yeah, uh, Ryan's one, which is an aura where blocks knock back and blow down, increases enemy aggro over time, and prevents aggro and waffles from damage. It's not great, I'll be honest. Right, let's clean up the final um, face. Age Lunch X? Was that the part we needed? No, I think we needed something else. Well, we didn't get what we wanted, but here is the weapon creation panel, if we use it. Hey, weapon complete. Which completes the quest. It's a weird little one. What does it get you? Warblades. Um, no, we'll take them, definitely. Uh, but they're not great. Uh, we probably have a better thing than them equipped. Uh, Warblades. Okay, they are eh, actually more powerful than what we've got equipped. Slightly lower crit rate, but actually genuinely more powerful, so let's... Let's move on to them, you're right. Uh, Sub-menu, swap gems with current. Loving that ability to actually uh, do that. Don't even have a new look for them, but there we go. So, mildly useful. And I think we'll hold it there. Uh, next episode we will be continuing into Apocrypha. Um, and I hope you'll join me then. Thank you very much, and good day.